A Muslim has challenged me on Muhammad's marriage to Aisha and has argued there's nothing morally wrong with a 53-year-old man having intercourse with a 9-year-old girl. Brace yourself for this response. But I will give you some education real quick. Christian apologies inspiring me philosophy. Education, huh? Well, that should involve reading your own sources. But you didn't. But we'll get to that later. Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, was persecuted heavily for two years straight and even throughout his whole entire prophethood. And they would say anything to tarnish his reputation. If he was a pedo, how come nobody pointed that out? So your argument is no one in Muhammad's time and region thought it was immoral to have a child bride. That is a useless argument to make because the popularity of a belief does not determine whether it is objectively right or wrong. Are you a moral relativist? Do you believe that cultures determine what is right or wrong? If anything, that would show Muhammad was a product of the morally corrupt culture of his time. It's unlikely he was getting divine revelations from a morally perfect being if he thought it was okay to have a child bride. Do you know why you can't find any such accusation of him at the time? Because to them, it was a normal marriage. Which is exactly my point. You're making it for me. Muhammad was a product of the morally corrupt culture of his time. He wasn't being guided by a morally perfect being to be an excellent moral example for all of humanity. And on top of that, she chose to marry him. It was a choice. What the heck did you just say? In your brain, it's okay for a 53-year-old man to climb on top of a 9-year-old girl if she says it's okay. 9-year-olds do not have the mental capacity to understand what is going on in that arrangement. All this shows is she was groomed by a perverted and morally corrupt culture. And to apply the same morals that you have of today onto back then is something we call the presentism fallacy. That does not work because Muhammad is supposed to be the moral example for humanity beyond his time. On top, Aisha willingly did it and she knew what she was doing. We know this why because Aisha hit puberty already. And That's debatable as early Islamic sources indicate she did not actually. Sahih al-Bakari 6130 narrated Aisha, I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet and my girlfriends also used to play with me. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves, but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at the time, as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Sahih Muslim, 3481. It was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was seven years old, and she was taken to him as a bride when she was nine years old, and she took her dolls with her. He died when she was 18 years old. Playing with dolls was only allowed for girls who had not reached puberty, and the early sources say that she was playing with dolls when Muhammad consummated his marriage with her, and she played with dolls in his presence. I mean, as we can see right here, the age of puberty came a lot, lot younger than now. And here is about, you know, how puberty came about for younger girls. Here is the source right at the bottom. You didn't read your own sources. I checked. Let's start with the second one. This quote is not actually from the paper, it's just a copy and paste quote you find on various Islamic websites. So, improper citation, we're already off to a bad start. But if we actually go to this paper, it actually says the opposite of the point you're trying to make. It says girls in the Paleolithic times matured quicker. This was delayed in the Neolithic period. And then, with settlement, childhood disease and postnatal undernutrition became common, and therefore the average age of menarche was delayed. Only now is it falling back to the Paleolithic time frame because of better nutrition. This is also what your other source is saying. So actually, in Muhammad's time, which was post-Neolithic and pre-modern times, it's likely that girls actually matured slower, not quicker. Although I just gave you scientific proofs, that's not my main question. We don't need to debate about that right now. Oh no, we're debating it because you didn't read your sources and they say the opposite of what you're trying to argue. My only question to you is that how come this criticism of Muhammad only came about recently? Because Islamic apologists started encountering us in the West and we were mortified by this obvious immoral behavior. As Robert Woodbury notes, it was Christian missionaries who actively worked to end child bride practices around the world. When was he supposed to marry her? Like according to you, when should he have married her 1400 years ago? The real question is, why did he need to marry her? He already had other wives and one is more than enough. I mean, the life expectancy in the Middle Ages, which came way, way after Muhammad, peace be upon him, was 31 to 25 years old. Once again, you did not read your source, let alone the title of the article that is right behind you, which says, old age isn't a modern phenomenon. Many people live long enough to grow old in the olden days too. 
The article is pointing out the reason life expectancy was so low was because of child mortality rates, but if you made it to the age of 25, you were likely to live past 50. So this is not an excuse to have child brides. Nor does any of this justify the obvious immoral behavior of Muhammad. He is clearly not an excellent moral example for humanity.